Hi. I'm working on a book right now for Katherine M. Walker called Shattering Dreams. This is book one. It's her debut novel. She's very excited about it, and I'm very excited to do it. Uh, we had discussed the possibility of me doing a behind-the-scenes, behind-the-mic kind of recording. So I keep putting it off, and <laughs> she has been very gracious about saying, Hey, is that going to happen anytime? And I keep saying, Yes, it will. And I tried a little while ago last week, and it was just an abysmal failure. It was too late at night, and uh, I gave up. So I'm going to try again tonight, and hopefully this one you guys will actually see. Um, Shattering Dreams is a uh, fantasy book. Really, really interesting medieval type of thing with a magical element. Uh, there's something called the veil, and you can draw power from the veil, um, or at least certain people can. And, uh, and it gives you these certain abilities. I won't get too in depth about what that entails. Just know that what happened a while back is that certain people who had this ability or it was quite strong in them started to go crazy and kind of murder people. It was awful. And so now there's what's called the taint. And um, people are very concerned about whether you're going to become a tainted, sundered one or whether you're going to be okay. Uh, this story focuses on three characters, the fourth son of the king, the prince, Alex, and his two friends, Kyle and Jess, or Jessalyn. Um, where I'm going to pick up in this story, I feel is safe because it's a memory that is addressed. The memory happens in the, in the prelude, and uh, this is him recounting it for the very first time to his friends and trying to show them through the veil as he can share his memories with them uh, that way so that they can actually see and experience what he saw and experienced when he was very young, about five years old. Um, so yeah, I'm going to recount this little bit here and uh, hopefully you enjoy it. And uh, I'm saying, ah, too much. Okay, I'll get right into it and then maybe I won't go hum and hawn too much. All right. So they're at a bar. They're chatting. It is the anniversary of his mother's death. Um, young adults. Okay. He saw Kyle and Jess trading glances before Jess shrugged, took a drink, and spoke so that both he and Kyle could hear. Show me, Alex. Show us the memory. Maybe we can help you understand what is wrong and put it to rest. Kyle nodded and well... Hmm. Try that again, sorry. Kyle nodded and signaled to the barmaid to refill their mugs before replying in kind. Yes, brother, show us. We are both more adept at killing than you. Perhaps we can puzzle out what about this memory, besides the obvious, is what is jarring you. No, that's not what I was supposed to say. I'll fix that here in a second. Let me try again. Perhaps we can help you puzzle out what is a... Perhaps we can help... Boy, you'd think I would be able to do this. Let me try one more time. We'll get through this here. Perhaps we can help puzzle out what it is about this memory, besides the obvious, that is jarring with you. Alex took a deep breath trying to settle his nerves, aware that his hands shook as he placed his mug on the table. Alex nodded, then concentrated on what he remembered from that day. Drawing both Kyle and Jess inside the barriers he kept between himself and the outside world, the images, sights, and sounds from that day flicked through his mind. It had been the subject of his nightmare since he was five, only William had ever been able to take him from them. As the images flicked through his brain, he interpreted his... Sorry. As the images flicked through his brain, he interrupted... You'd think, you'd think I could get that word, but I just can't get it tonight. Okay. <clears throat> As the images flicked through his brain... He interpreted to his friends as best he could. I was on a picnic with my mother. I was trying so very hard to impress her. 
Alex smiled despite himself at the first part. The memory and the images of his childish self trying so hard to impress his mother. And he heard his friends chuckle at the images, which were backed up by his childish inner monologue. Then Alex sobered, feeling a tear trace down his cheek, knowing what was coming. He'd seen the memory, the flashing images, the sounds, repeating since he was five years old, waking, screaming from sleep. The whistling noise, the grunt and gasps of pain, the guards and the servants crumpling to the ground, stumbling back as his mother pushed him, her voice, the last thing she'd said to him. The last thing she'd said to him, Run! Hide! Echoing through his brain. Looking up, confused, despite screaming at himself not to look, not to see her death this time. The fear on her face. The dark figure. Her head being wrenched back. A large knife drawn across her throat. Warm blood splattering on him, her lifeless, broken form crumpling to the ground. Then staring, terrified, looking into the face of the sundered one. The sharp bark of laughter, the final words ringing through his head. You'll join our ranks soon enough, brother. Alex only knew he caused a commotion in the bar, screaming and throwing the mug he was holding, when he saw his own guards holding back the barrel's muscle that maintained position on the door. Alex closed his eyes, taking a trembling breath, hearing Marcus's calm, confident voice assuring the barkeep all would be fine, that the king would compensate for any damages. Hearing muted voices around the bar mutter, Queen's death. He gathered the hug of He gathered the hood of his cloak had fallen back. It wasn't the first time he'd gotten out of control on the anniversary of his mother's death. Alex allowed his friends to pull him back onto the bench he'd been sitting on, slumping against the wall. He shook and held back the sob that wanted to escape. Hearing a thump on the table, he looked up to see the barkeep place new goblets on the table, pouring a double measure of an amber liquid into them. As Kyle went to offer the barkeep money, the man held up his hands, declining the offer. No, my lord, it's unnecessary. My niece was a servant in the hunting party a few weeks back. She tells me she'd be dead if it weren't for the bravery of you, Lady Jessalyn, and His Highness. She said the three of you protected them against the tainted ones at the risk of your own lives. My family is forever in your debt. You are all welcome here any time you need. With that, the barkeep placed the bottle on the table. My family makes that. It's new. If you like it, I'll get you more. The barkeep turned, making his way through the ring of guards and back to the bar. He gestured at the musicians in the corner, who stared up, playing again. Sorry. He gestured at the musicians in the corner, who started up, playing again, and sent his barmaids around with full jugs of beer to fill up the mugs of his other patrons. Alex took a steadying breath, wiping a tear from his cheek. He picked up his goblet, considering the amber liquid it contained for a moment, then raised it to his friends, who matched his gesture before throwing back the contents. Alex's eyes widened in shock at the fiery liquid. Alex's eyes widened in shock as the fiery liquid spilled down his throat. Glancing at his friends, he knew the barmen would have hit. Almost. I've almost got it. I'm going to read this last little uh, sentence and then we're going to be done here. Glancing at his friends, he knew that the barman would have a hit. Yeah. Can I fail at this last one here? 
glancing at his friends. He knew the barman would have a hit as soon as everyone found out about this new product. Okay, I'm going to stop there because, wow, that was embarrassing. <laughs> Uh, thanks so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm really enjoying working on this title. It's going to be out very, very, very soon. And uh, yeah, look for it. It's called Shattering Dreams by Catherine M. Walker. Thanks for listening. <laughs>